Celtic Frosty the Snowman. That's right, it's coming up to Christmas time and we're here to talk about the mighty Celtic Frost, extreme metal giants, um, legends in the game, similar to Venom, Baffery, merciful fate bands of that nature. If you like most of them, you'll probably like Celtic Frost, at least the early shit, anyway. And we're here to talk about my favourites, my least favourites, and everything in between. Now, we've done these ranking series for a while now, you know how it goes. You're gonna pop your own down below, what's your least favourite album, all the way up to your favourite album. What albums do you fucking hate? What albums do you love? And do you like them all? Because I don't. Well, we'll get to the ones I fucking don't like. But, without further ado, let's get in with it, with my Celtic Frost ranting. Ranting? Sure, we're gonna rant. We're gonna rant some, and it'll be fun. So, without further ado, I guess let's get stuck in with my least favourite Celtic Frost album. And it's an album I've talked about before. It may be on a previous list of maybe my worst albums of all time. <laughs> Cold Lake. Of course it's Cold Lake. Now, do I still think it's one of the worst albums of all time? No, I don't. When I did that video, I was just kind of in the moment, in the anger. In the anger moment, because, you know, Celtic Frost going from the amazing Morbid Tales and... Um, the fucking, what's it called? <laughs> the cool one, to Megatherion. Yeah, from, from those amazing albums and then the EPs and stuff to this is like, what? It's very just strange. And then you got the back of the album cover, if you looked at it, proper glammed out with a poofy hair Tom G. Warrior has. And it's just, it's just strange. It's a very strange album. It's kind of like Bathory when they released Octagon and it's just very, just doesn't fit. You know, and they can do something different, and you know it could work, as we see on another album which I'll talk about. So they can do this kind of glam stuff well, with a kind of darker edge and a heavier tone, which they do on Vanity Slash Nemesis, which we'll get to because that album's actually fucking good. This one isn't. This one isn't good. The production's not very good in it. His vocals. He's trying to. He's trying to sound. Too much like classic glam bands, and he doesn't have a voice for that, so he doesn't sound good. He sounds way better on Vanity Slash Nemesis. Again, we'll get to that, and I'll keep talking about that one, but, you know, it, it's like a step up. It's like Yin and Yang. That is the light side. This is the dark side. Not in a good way. In a in an Anakin Skywalker Attack of the Clones way, where sand is bad. In, in that kind of way. Yeah, this, this album, it's... It isn't terrible though, I can enjoy this album. It's just easily the worst Celtic Frost album they've ever done. The The songs are generic, sometimes cheesy. Um, the, again, the production's bad, his singing's bad on it as well. So, all in all, it's still not a great album, but it's not the worst of all time. Some people overblow it, I've overblown it. And I'll admit I was wrong, I can listen to it today. It's fine. You know, even Cherry Orchard, you know, the music video is pretty funky. I, I don't care. Um, I've stopped. I've stopped caring too much about hating stuff. So, yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go out of my way to listen to it, and it's still coming last. But I don't hate it anymore. So that's the best you're gonna get for this one. So it's fucking here. Next one's gonna trigger the fuck out of everyone because I always see people putting this number one, and I don't understand why. Into the pandemonium. That's right, I'm going with this one instead of the fucking other glam one they did. Fuck you, I don't care. This album, I don't understand it. I don't understand this album. Maybe this is one which just takes time and time and time, but this one, for me, is a head-scratcher. It it might be like the situation with Gore Guts, where I hate it obscure, and I listen to it, listen, 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 and then, like, two years later, I now really like Obscura. Maybe that'll happen with this one. At the moment... Don't like it, don't understand it. Starting off with a cover, Mexican Radio, this def definitely feels out of fucking place. Not only that, there's so many weird, like, moans on here. He's just moaning throughout a lot of the songs, and his voice kind of sounds just... Just weird, like like this ghost has been castrated, or like his balls are getting crushed by a vice, and he's like... Ugh, uh, it's like a ghost singing on this album. It's fucking awful. His vocals are awful. Anyone who has this number one has rocks in their ears because how can you enjoy his voice? How can you enjoy this stuff? 
This might be even worse than Cold Lake. I almost put this last. That's I was close to putting this last because at least in Cold Lake, the whole thing's glammy and it's shit. But at least it doesn't have as shit moments as this album because most of the time I can't even listen to it. It's just too weird. Too avant-garde, they say. I know it's the creator of avant-garde black metal and all that stuff, but I don't fucking care. It sounds shit. He sings shit on it. The There's so many weird bits, but when the songs hit, they do hit pretty hard. There are some, there are a couple of songs on here I do quite enjoy, but then the other songs that just kind of sweep the legs out, like a Mortal Kombat move, a low sweep, and it's just, it's a disjointed album, it's a messy album, it's a confusing album, and I don't like it. I don't like it. Um, has anyone played The Witcher 3? It's like that aborted baby that comes back to life and it's like, oh, that's what this album is. It doesn't fit. It shouldn't belong in this world. It should be terminated. Go abort it back to the fucking never realm. Fuck this. This album, yeah, don't like it. Don't like it. Fuck. If you like it, good for you. I know loads of people say it's the best Celtic Frost album. I really disagree, but, you know, you're entitled to your own opinion because... It's a friendly place. YouTube is a friendly place. Me saying this is definitely not going to trigger any hate. <laughs> but yeah, for me, uh, Into the Pandemonium, it's pretty shit, so it's coming here. Here it comes, Vanity slash Nemesis. Now we're getting into the albums that I actually like. This is like the yin to the yang of Cold Lake. This is just a, such a more improved album. The vocals are better, the riffs are better, the guitar solos in some of, here, on some of the songs on here are amazing. Amazing guitar solos, amazing vocals, and I love stuff like Glam Terror, and this reminds me of Glam Terror, stuff like Projects in the Jungle and Power Metal. Amazing albums, and people just dismiss them because it's not, you know, edgy, tough boy Pantera. Fuck you. Fuck you if you do that. Fuck you really hard. Now, yeah, I actually thoroughly enjoy myself with this album more than Into the Pandemonium, way fucking more, and way more than Cold Lake. They booked their ideas up from Cold Lake and created a Fucking banger of an album, in my opinion. A banger of an album. The Heart Beneath. Oh, yeah. And the name of my bride, so riffy, reminds me of Megadeth. That song sounds like Megadeth, to be honest. And I'd rather listen to that than the avant-garde shit on Into the Pandemonium. So, yeah, Vanity Slash Nemesis. Really surprised they enjoyed this one as much as I did. Thoroughly, I think it's one of the best Celtic Frost albums. So, yeah, it's coming, it's coming here. And from here on out, we get into the fucking big boys now. Next up is Monotheist. Some people's number one. It is one of the best comeback albums of all time. Um, but it's not my favourite. Definitely lacks that kind of early, thrashy, evil sound. Um, it's still evil. It has more doomy, darker, dingier sound. It's a lot more methodical. And the riffs are a lot just darker and deeper. But... It's a lot less first wave black metal kind of bleh, and the vocals different, um, but it's still a fucking fantastic album. This is like Carcass's um, Surgical Steel. Comes back with a bang after so many years. Like who would have thought they'd come back with this after Vanity and Nemesis and Cold Lake? No one. And they fucking did it. And it's just fantastic. It is just hellish in sound and the riffs, ooh, the riffs on here, fucking slay. A dying god coming into human flesh. What an amazing song. One of the best they've ever done. Yeah, this album as a whole gets the love it deserves, and I think it is deserving of that love. So yeah, Monophius, fucking fantastic. Number two. Number two is to Megatherion, that's right, the absolute classic, the first album I heard by Celtic Frost, most people's number ones as well, and I can see why, because this is a fucking masterpiece. I can see all the progression from Morbid Tales to this. I mean, tighter sound, better production, cooler, you know, guitar melodies and stuff. Still has that kind of evil atmosphere, just improves on it. But there's just something about the debut, which is just too... Too good, but we'll get to that. I mean, starting with the art, the art, come on. The art is, is phenomenal. It's like Dennis the Menace kind of slingshot into Jesus' head with a fucking nail. How good is that? And of course, you've got the classic songs like... Circle of the Tyre! Which I first heard Opeth do, because... 
I'm a big Opeth fan, and I heard Opeth before Celtic Frost. And I was like, holy shit, this song's amazing. Who does this? Oh, Celtic Frost. Check them out, because I'm not, you know, old. I didn't, wasn't born around fucking 1980s. So I didn't know who the fuck they were. Um, so after listening to that cover, I listened to Celtic Frost, and this is the album I listened to, and it blew me away, and I've loved it ever since. To make a theory on, it is just a banger classic of an album, and you all should have it in your collection. It doesn't need my praise. It's already good enough. So yeah, it's coming here at number two. So number one, my favourite Celtic Frost album is Morbid Fucking Tales, which is kind of an EP, but then it was like a full release in, in North America, so fuck it, it's coming here. Love this album. Fucking love this album. Every song's a killer. Every song is a killer um, from front to back. I mean, starting it off with one of the best songs, Into Crips of Rare. I haven't even talked about um, Tom G. Warrior's because he, he does a lot of errs. <laughs> and it's so fun. And there's loads throughout this album. But yeah, Into Crypt of Rays, bloody mind melting. It's unapologetically thrashy, in your face, balls to the walls, from start to finish, never lets up, doesn't give you time to breathe. It's the best. It's not even fucking close. I mean, the intro screams like you're descending into hell. That's how I know you good, how good it is. It's fast as fuck, boy. It's just like Sonic. Yeah, um, this album is amazing, so it is easily my favourite Celtic Frost album of all time. So, maybe a controversial list? Who knows? Let me know down below. What's your favourite Celtic Frost album? What's your least favourite? And am I a bastard for hating Into the Pandemonium? Let me know down below and we'll see you again on another Quest for Metal.